All right, scholars, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at the phosphorus cycle. We can use the symbol P. There's a big difference between phosphorus and the carbon cycle. There is no phosphorus in the atmosphere. It all exists in um, either mineral form in the in the earth in rock, or um, or dissolved in water. And so we're going to take a look at a similar setup that we had last time. We're going to have land out here, and we're going to have ocean next to it, and land going underneath the ocean. So most of this phosphorus comes from phosphorus-rich sediment, sedimentary rock. That's really the primary source, but it can, uh, it can move through the biosphere. And one way it does this is by dissolving into ocean water. So now we have um, P in ocean water. And this is happening through the process of diffusion or dissolving. Because the phosphorus rich rock is in contact with the water, some of the phosphorus goes from the rock into the water. All right, now we have water that's nutrient rich because it has all this phosphorus down here, but that's no good unless we can get that up to the surface where, where life is happening. And there's a process by which that occurs called upwelling. So we're gonna draw another arrow here. It's going up through the process of upwelling. And what causes the water to go to the top? It is due to winds. If we have offshore winds, that blow um, against the ocean. They make the water go outward. So offshore winds push surface water. And when the water gets pushed this way, it creates a, 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 it creates a current where the water um, uh, creates a cycle, like so, a convection cycle. Um, all right, so water is going around, and that means the nutrient-rich waters are coming up to the surface. And I will mention that these offshore winds, they're seasonal. So um, at the right time of the year is when these winds occur, and that's when you get the upwelling, bringing these nutrients to the surface. And it is... Uh, it's a it's a rejoiceful time for all the marine life on the, off the coast. Why? Because upwelling brings this newt brings this phosphorus to the surface. And once it's on the surface, it is taken in by uh, algae. And when it's taken in by the algae, um, and another name for algae in this case we, would be the phytoplankton. And then it's part of a food chain. Algae taken in by zooplankton, the little tiny creatures which is eaten by fish and which is then eaten by coastal birds. So let's draw some of those coastal birds here. Here's a bird going down catching some fish and here's a bird flying over the, um, the coast. And uh, as it's flying over it's gonna release its waste 
Hopefully this has never happened to you on our campus. And there are lots of birds, so there's lots of bird droppings. And these bird droppings are high in phosphorus. So this is um, phosphorus-rich manure. So what we have is the upwelling. Phosphorus went into the bird and then comes down to the ground as manure. Now this may seem like an insignificant thing that we get phosphorus just from manure from birds, but there's an island named Nauru, and here's an image of it. It is a very small island, but at one point uh, it was the second wealthiest place on earth, um, wealthiest inhabitants. Where did they get all their money? We'll talk a little bit more about this in class, but it's phenomenal. They got their money from guano, which was their word, uh, which is the word for bird droppings. So you see this white here. This is bird droppings, and they are actually mining it, and they became the world's biggest supplier of fertilizer. So they, um, um, their economy has been solely based on that. Now, unfortunately, this phosphorus is a limited resource. So they've had to come up with other ways to sustain their economy, even as this resource dwindles. So um, maybe it might remind you a little bit of an Easter Island. But let's go back to our drawing over here. This is a, a key source for manure, and it is shipped around the world. However, there is uh, there are other, other there are other examples where we can get phosphorus. There are times when you get upheaval. And I'm going to do this in a different color here. Let's take blue. This phosphorus-rich sedimentary rock, through geological um, events, can come to the surface through a process we call geological upheaval. And um, those of you who were studying the, um, the plate tectonic theory, um, as far as, as during our geocycles jigsaw, then you'll know that this upheaval can occur uh, when plates collide and when plate gets pushed up. So we can bring that phosphorus rich rock to the surface where we can then mine mine that. So a little mountain here. So there can be phosphorus mining in only a limited number of places on the planet where this occurs. One plate's one place where it does occur is in Florida, and we'll take a look at an image in class of, um, of some of these mines in Florida. All right, so this is a more simple cycle, um, but there is a strong human impact. So let's take a look at these here. Human impact. First of all, there is excessive mining of, um, of the phosphorus. And it, this process of geological upheaval is slow. I mean, we're talking in geologic timescales here. So if we mine it, it's going to be gone. If we, if we mine it to exhaustion or to depletion. Okay, so by excessive mining, we're mining it for agriculture. This is fertilizer, fertilizer stuff. And also we use it for soaps, detergents. If you look at your laundry detergent, it may contain phosphorus, or if it doesn't, it will say on the label phosphorus free or phosphate free. And that's a good thing because when this phosphorus goes into the environment, it, um, it causes algae blooms, algal blooms, because um, it is a nutrient that al algae and the plants flourish on. But then they flourish too well, and then you get hypoxia. Okay, so why is this a bad thing? Number one, Excessive mining means we're adding too much um, to the environment. It's one thing to have this phosphorus sequestered in rock, but when you mine it and then put it into, um, into use, it becomes part of the environment, and now it can move through that environment much more easily. Um, but too easily because it can cause eutrophication. The other thing is that if we mine it excessively, then we also get depletion. That becomes accelerated. 
and we will run out sooner. And this phosphorus is very much a limited resource. The second human impact with it is because it causes eutrophication of waters. So following that, we get dead zones, or what is called hypoxia. O drop in oxygen levels. All right, so in the phosphorus cycle, we took a look how phosphorus does not exist in the atmosphere. It only exists in rock form, mineral form, and it can dissolve into ocean water. That ocean water can get carried to the surface through this seasonal process of upwelling that happens from offshore winds. And with the upwelling, this nutrients, these nutrients are now at the surface where they're taken in by phytoplankton, then zooplankton, then fish, and then finally coastal birds that eat it. And then they drop phosphorus-rich manure, which can be mined and sold around the world as fertilizer. And there are other places around the world where there are some natural deposits on the surface, which got there from sedimentary rock um, being uh, um, geologically upheaved to the surface through tectonic forces. Okay, let's take a look at the next cycle, the nitrogen cycle.